Our next topic is Newton's method. I'm not going to write any code for a while. I'm just going to tell you a little bit of calculus. So Newton's method is a technique for quickly finding very accurate approximations to the zeros of differentiable functions. If that doesn't mean anything to you, what I just said is there is a method to solve all problems, as long as they're differentiable. So it's a pretty handy thing to know. So what does this mean? Well, here's a function. It's differentiable. x squared minus 2 takes in a number, squares it, subtracts 2. At some point in a math class, I suspect you've graphed a function like this. And we see that we have x uh, on the horizontal axis, f of x on the vertical axis. And the minimum is at negative 2 when x is 0. But the more interesting point is here when the graph crosses the x-axis. That's called the zero of the function. That's a sum x. When you compute f of x, you get zero. And what is that point? Well, it turns out for this function, it is the square root of 2, 1.14. Oh, excuse me, 1.414. So why this is interesting is that it's easy to come up with this equation it's hard to compute this decimal expansion, but now we're going to have a way to do it. So if we ever want to compute the square root of 2 on our own without trusting some library to do it for us, we can do so very easily. So here's a method for computing square roots, but not just square roots, cube roots, and lots of other problems uh, that involve differentiable functions. OK, so the story here is that the way we use this to compute a square root is that we look for the positive 0 of x squared minus a, and that's always going to be the square root of a. Because by looking for the positive 0, we're solving the equation x squared equals a, which will, of course, be solved by the square root of a. When you square it, you get a. That's what square roots are. OK, how do we do it? Quite procedural. We start with a function and an initial guess as to where the 0 is and we're going to repeatedly improve that guess x in three steps. So here's an illustration of what's going on. We have some curve f of x. We have some point x that is our current guess. This is not a 0. This is way down here at negative 12. We're looking for this point. And we're going to do it using the calculus. So calculus tells us that uh, any curve that's differentiable, meaning it's smoothly changing, can be approximated by a line at any point. And we're going to use that linear approximation to get us close to where the 0 is. In three steps, we compute the value of f at the guess x. So we have to figure out where we are. We also compute the derivative of f at the guess x. That's called f prime of x. Now the derivative tells us the slope of this line, or how fast the function is changing. And then we update the guess to be whatever the guess was before x minus f of x divided by f prime of x. So it's pretty straightforward as long as you can compute the value of the function and you can compute the value of its derivative at the current point. So what's going on with this update? Well, we're at this current point. We've at this x and uh, this f of x. There's this length here that is our distance from 0, negative f of x. And the slope of this tangent line is f prime of x, the derivative of f at x, which means we can compute how far to go in the horizontal direction in order to have followed this line all the way until it intersects with the x-axis. So the change to x that we need to make is negative f of x divided by f prime of x, which brings us to this point, Newton's point. That is Isaac Newton claiming his territory by reaching the zero of the tangent line x minus f of x over f prime of x. So that brings us here. And then we just repeat this process until we get an x that's really close to a 0, meaning f of x is 0. Wikipedia has a nice illustration of this process where I 
pick an x, I find f of x, I follow the tangent, do that again, brings me over here, I do that again, follow the tangent up to the x-axis, do that one more time, and there I am right next to the zero. Okay, so how do we use Newton's method, assuming we can implement it, which we will do pretty soon? Well, we can find the square roots with it. The way we'd find the square root of 2 is we would define a function that is x squared minus 2, because the solution of that will be the square root of 2, whatever it is. Now we have to know how to differentiate that function. So uh, you, if you've taken calculus, you'll know that the derivative of this function is 2 times x. If you don't know that, well, I just told you. Once you know f and its derivative, you can find the 0 by just calling the find 0 function. So that will give us the square root of 2, this actual length, as a decimal expansion. We had to input f of x and f prime of x, its derivative, and then find 0 did all the heavy listing. So it applied Newton's method until f of x was really close to 0. So absolute value of f of x is less than 10 to the negative 15th, very small, starting at 1. So that's what the find 0 function does. I haven't defined it yet, but I'm going to. So that's how we'd find a square root. How would we find a cube root of 729, for instance? Well, a uh, cube root is the length of the side of a cube with volume v. So we'd have to define an equation where the solution is the cube root of 729, which is x cubed minus 729. So if x is the cube root of 729, this will be 0. And then we have to derive that which is 3x squared, and then we call find 0, and it does all the work to tell us that 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. 